Embarking on the journey once you've embraced the destination can make the experience that more satisfying. No second takes, that's what I'm talking about today. It's no secret that people often shy away from talking about death, even when it's staring us in the face. During this period, more than at any other time, I've been conscious of death amongst the living. Some due to COVID-19, some due to old age, others due to various causes. One thing that rings true of all these incidents is that there never seems to be an appropriate time to let go of our loved ones, but rather that letting go is foisted on us, ready or not, like it or not. You could say it's the most unrehearsed, fixed appointment of all time, and there are no second takes. It would seem that the fear of the unknown might be one reason for our aversion to dwelling on this major life event that is common to us all. Indeed, someone recently observed that when confronted with accepting the absence of a loved one, that death has a finality to it that is, just strikes you dumb. I could go down the road of recommending spiritual exercises to prepare us for the afterlife, but that's not the focus of today's advocacy. I simply want to identify what I have observed to be the one thing that has made people's transition from this life easier on them and on their loved ones. I recently attended the virtual funeral of a beloved relative, and the tributes that attended the ceremony were mostly filled with a sense of celebrating a life lived on purpose, a life intentional in prioritizing human connections. So my takeaway from this, and therefore what I want to share at this time, is that we should be more deliberate about nurturing our connections with other human beings, as simple as that. Not so much our achievements, but the human connections we have the opportunity to make in the midst of our achievements. If we do this by way of a priority, then there'll be nothing to regret when the time comes for us to say bye-bye to this world, because in an open way, we would have enriched the lives of those around us by simply interacting with them. I would say that this is a good definition of fulfillment, wouldn't you? Um. Uh, okay, you're talking about fulfillment. I wonder how you got um, to know that uh, the person who is gone has, uh, has other things to do. Uh, do does not have, have other place. things to do. Oh, okay. Or is fulfilled. And because I've never really seen anybody apart from maybe Musheshe, you know, who just lays down and said, "Oh, I'm fulfilled." <laughs> apart from maybe people who commit suicide, says, "Okay, I'm fulfilled." Lord, where are you now? I'm ready to to go. You know, there's still a lot to do, you know. But for me, um, it's always, if you don't want to be forgotten as soon as you are dead, let her do things worth writing or write things worth reading, you know. And so your relationship with people, yeah, those people will remember. And then after some time, you know, it will f fade out and then it's all gone. But what you create in the world, the world will always, always remember. Mm. Um, Socrates, nobody knows Socrates' children. But we still discuss Socrates till date. You know, Thomas Edison. These are people you don't even know who they are, whether they have male children, mm. female children, the material. But what they added to make the world a better place for all of us. Once you see that thing, you always remember it. And, and so, today, tomorrow, God forbid, but the time will always come because one good thing about this life is that none of us will live it alive. And then when somebody's talking about a kene, oh, Oh, that lady that created the advocates. And then, Funny enough, I don't want to be remembered for that. No, I'm saying, <laughs> but unfortunately, unfortunately, these are the things that people can perceive yeah. in the scope, and that they will remember. But mm -hmm. you know, what you want is not people, what people would. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. in practical, what people, the names that people will remember. Right. You know, what you create, how did you make the world a better place? Yes. And so that's why for me, rounding up, that sometimes I look at our leaders and I laugh. All of this money, how many of us still remember Abakari? Exactly. All of this money, the only thing you'll be remembered for is, you know, the impact you made to humanity and how did you make life easy and better for people. That's all. Otherwise, if you like, how well you serve your God is your personal experience when you get there. I, I relate with uh, Kenneth's advocacy entirely because, you know, each time I ask myself, you know, what my purpose is in life, it's a, it's a very deep question. When you constantly, you know, reflect on why am I here? What am I meant to do? You know, and how do I want to be remembered when I'm no longer here? If we begin to ask ourselves those questions, then some of the pseudo or the things we, the mundane things we now 
put so much emphasis would begin to look very natural. Oh, I have 200 houses. Would not matter. But what would matter would be the people that you have been able to lift because that's the story that will be shared after. And so I relate completely. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of lessons that this thing is, is finite. There's a time when we'd leave and there'll be stories that'll be shared or things that'll be said about us. So what would our story be? It's important that we reflect mm -hmm. on that. And you see the truth, you're all, you're all right, yes, as in we, we, we want to be remembered and that's the best way. But don't you think that sometimes when, you, when there's nothing to remember you by, you then force something on people to remember you? I mean, case in point, the president right now is naming real stations after certain Nigerians. That in itself is, is a joke because what he's trying to do is to make you remember people who you should actually forget. Okay. Uh, and... The, and I think that the irony of it also is that I can't imagine telling Seydou that, oh, meet me at uh, Saraki uh, <laughs> Rail Station, because I don't even know what town we're talking about. If it's Agbo, Agbo Station, we know where Agbo is, <laughs> halfway between Benin and Asaba. But you go and name it, I think that's the Good Luck Jonathan one. Yes. So you say, meet me at Good Luck Jonathan Station. You know, just because you want us to remember certain people who may not be worth remembering. Remember but it tells you that we do need to remember people. That's what it, sh what it shows, that even those who are not supposed to be remembered actually feel that they want to be remembered. Uh, okay, uh, for me, the thing here is, uh, is, is about, when we talk about living a fulfilled life, it's where are you right now? Have you, are you fulfilled with the life that you have? Do you have things on stage? And because for me, you know, this is, this is something, a topic that I talk about all the time with people. And I'm saying, why keep things in there and live a life of, of regret, of things you ought to have said? Every day for me, the way I consider every day in my own personal space is that every day is the last day. And for me, that is it. And so I'm going to say what I have to say today. I'm going to do what I'm going to do today. I'm going to live my life on a project. I'm going to be there. And for me, the most important thing is that it's not how much you have in your account. It's how much you've been able, what difference you made in other people's lives. Things that you don't even think as anything, you've forgotten. But to somebody else, it's major. For me, that is all what it is about. And there are a lot of people, and it still comes back to all the things we've been saying today. People are thinking that they are afraid to die, they are doing the best. There are certain things they want to say. You can't just say, if not, this day I did here. Yeah. If not, if I would have done this. That means you're not living a fulfilled life. You're not living true to yourself. For me, the thing about life is that be who you want to be. Do what you need to do. Don't be afraid of it. It will come anywhere where it will come. So why don't you do all that you can do right now and ensure that you, you get it? Don't be apologetic. It's not about what people will think. It's about your inner self. All of us, we have that. Uh, what, do I, what do I call it now? A, a compass that tells us when we're doing the right thing and when we're, not, when we're doing the wrong. If, even when if the other people are seeing it or other people are not seeing it. At the end of the day, what impact? Because one day we're going to leave this earth, no matter how long we live. Nobody's going to be live up to 150 years. And then the world is still going on. 1,000 years from now, what would people say about you? Yeah, that yeah. Should, we should think about, rather than what people are saying about us now, which is what a lot of people focus on. Yeah, I mean, again, you. you know, part of the inspiration for me was, like I said, a loved one. And she was very deliberate about investing in people's lives. Now, yes, like Libra said, those are not people that, you know, the people who want to be remembered for things they did, they'll be remembered in this world. But there's, there's something deeper than that, for me anyway, and that's the human connection. And it made me reflect and say, yes, you're on the way to somewhere, but that human being, who may never sing your praises, that is actually what counts. But unfortunately, that's not the thing we chronicle. But uh, hey, to whom those that uh, are listening. It's time for us to respect the director's signal. He's telling us it's time to go. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to Plus TV Africa forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next time, same channel, let's keep advocating for a better society, one conversation, one action at a time. Five conversations. Bye-bye. Bye. Five, five. One action at a time. Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. 
There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. While labor were discussing with the government, mm -hmm. nobody was discussing on our behalf. Okay, Those we have, of we have, that we have to leave it. Protesting. We have to leave it there. Okay. And, and no, uh, no, we're, we're no, outside the zone of this segment. I can hear. The thing is, and I don't know this. This out of studio. No, I don't know I said I said the show, we can gist, but there's no more time. Okay. Me, I'm for revolution, but I want to have a target. No, uh, I'm coming. No, no, don't worry. I want to say that for the discussion. I want to say that for discussion. I'm just airing my views. I feel, I feel your passion. I have to move on. <laughs> I shall call you after the show. I'll call you after the show.